a queen excluder is inserted between the two brood chambers to prevent the queen from having access to the lower chamber. We now release the queen into the upper brood chamber. A further queen excluder keeps the queen out of the super. After nine days, all brood remaining in the lower brood chamber is sealed. After setting the upper chamber with the queen aside, we remove one outside comb from the lower brood chamber and shake all adhering bees back into the hive. In the center of the hive body, a gap is created. This gap will take the queen rearing frame with the grafts. Any natural queen cells must be removed. Returning to the queen right part of the nursing stock, we remove the queen. It is transferred to a nucleus. The three-frame nucleus is formed from two frames of brood and one of food, together with all adhering bees. All other bees from the remaining frames are brushed into the nursing stock. Besides good food supply, overcrowding lots of bees into one hive body is the recipe for acceptance and for best nursing for our breeding material. So we have compressed the bees from several brood chambers into a single box. Surplus frames of brood are distributed among other colonies. A guard made from queen excluder material prevents other queens from gaining entrance. About two hours afterwards, the colony shows typical signs of queenlessness. This is the time to transfer the queen rearing frame with the grafts into the gap. Here, the nurse bees provide the young larvae with large quantities of royal jelly. This phase of engorging is important for the full development of the growing queen larvae. Great care is needed when inspections are made to check acceptance and success. The queen cells are sealed five days after grafting. When using this method, the nursing stock will retain the sealed cells until they are ripe. The other two methods divide the tasks of acceptance and finishing between two different colonies. In order to use the swarm box method, we also begin by first selecting a strong, healthy colony. Into the swarm box, we shake young bees from six to eight brood frames. Make sure that the queen remains in her colony. The bees should fill about one third of the box. They are provided with one frame of pollen stores one frame with water, and one unsealed frame of honey. Then the swarm box is covered and is left undisturbed. After a few hours, the bees deprived of their queen become restless. 
The batch of grafted cells can now be applied. The finishing of the cells is done by other strong colonies. Because we need many nurse bees, we raise frames with open brood into the super and leave a gap between them. That space we created in the brood chamber is filled with empty combs. Twenty-four hours after grafting, fifteen to twenty started cells are inserted into the gap between the brood. The cells remain in the finisher colony until they are ripe and require caging. Now the procedure in actual practice. The swarm box has a large screened floor which prevents the bees suffocating during confinement. Having moistened the sides of a funnel, we brush the young bees off several frames of brood. This creates a queenless and broodless shook swarm. After briefly thumping the swarm box hard on the ground, the frames with pollen, water and food are lowered carefully among the bees. The water frame is made by spraying water into an empty comb. A special crown board which can hold the grafted cell cups is used. The swarm box is left in a cool, dark place until the bees begin to show signs of queenlessness. The crown board can hold between 50 and 60 cell holders. In order to avoid drying out of larvae, the grafting should be done just before they are needed. The bees will quickly supply the larvae with lots of royal jelly. Cut cells can readily replace grafted cell cups. The swarm box is now left alone for an hour at least. Once cells have been accepted, the finishing is done by another strong colony. In order to preserve warmth, we place an insulating cover over the swarm box. Rearing queen cells by using starter and finisher colonies also requires a healthy, strong stock. Nine days before starting, a queen excluder is placed between the two brood chambers to confine the queen to a single hive body. Nine days later, all brood in the lower chamber will be sealed. This part of the hive will become the starter colony designed to accept the cells. Removing two frames from the hive, we create two gaps. The other frames only contain sealed brood as well as some stores. We put the queen with two frames of brood and one of food as well as all adhering bees into a nucleus box. This nucleus is taken to an out apiary. We now proceed to cram all bees from the other hive bodies on the right into the one brood box which will be our starter colony. The brood frames, especially all frames with open brood, are later given to the honey chamber of other colonies in the apiary. The starter colony is now closed up. The entrance is covered with a queen excluder. Bees will shortly be gathering in the empty spaces. When bees show signs of queenlessness, two frames with about 40 grafted queen cells are transferred. The stock must be fed if the flows of nectar are scant. After 24 hours, the cells are transferred into occupied supers of honey-producing colonies, the finishers. 
It is important that several hours before, frames with open brood have been transferred into the honey chamber. Now a gap is formed. The cell rearing frame with the started cells is placed in position. A finisher colony should never be given more than 15 to 20 cells. The starter colony can now receive two more cell rearing frames. Here the first manipulations for raising queen cells by the starter and finisher method have been performed. The super and the upper brood chamber with the queen have been lifted off and are on the right. We remove two frames with only small patches of brood from the lower brood chamber. This creates two gaps. A starter should still contain at least six frames of sealed brood. If not, we must add frames of sealed brood from other colonies. Moving to the queen right brood chamber, we remove the queen together with three frames and the adhering bees and put them into a nucleus box. All bees are brushed from the other frames and the frames are temporarily placed into an empty hive body. Later we transfer the frames into occupied supers of other stocks. The starter colony should be overflowing with bees because this method too gives best results when we crowd many bees into the smallest possible space. After we have covered the hive, we place a guard of queen excluder material over the entrance. This stops queens from gaining access. A few hours later in the queenless starter colony, we can hear the loud buzzing of the orphan bees. Meanwhile, young nurse bees have gathered in the two gaps. Now is the time for giving the starter stock about 40 grafted cells. Of course, the breeding material can also be offered as cut or punched cells. After 24 hours, the queen cells have been started by the starter colony and can be exchanged for another batch.